as I said, the, uh, the, it sort of came out in the 70s, and very briefly, uh, Bundler and Brinda were the two guys that kind of brought it to, to being. And um, Richard Bundler was a student at the time. Uh, he was doing a PhD in um, computer uh, programming. And John Brinda was a professor of linguistics. And as many students do, or so the story goes, um, Bundler needed some money to help him you know, with his studies, and um, so he got a job transcribing the therapy tapes of three of the best therapists in the world. So he would sit there and listen to the client sessions, and then he'd take, type them all out. And he listened to Virginia Satir, who is um, known as the gold therapy in family, um, family therapy, Fritz Perls, who brought us Gestalt therapy, and also... Um, Milton Erickson, who probably was single-handedly the one person to bring hypnosis back into the main stage in the middle of last century, would you believe? Um, and what Bandler did was, over a period of time between the two of them, they looked at the language patterns of these therapists and the way they asked questions. So it very much started with Bandler looking at, well, what are these people doing? And rather than thinking about the content, you know, oh, he said this and she said that, and this is what happened, and da 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 da. What he looked at was how a client said what they said or described their problem. And then he listened to how did these specific therapists ask questions back to unravel the practitioner's or the, um, the client's problem. And over a period of time, he sort of probably, I don't know because I wasn't there, but he probably metaphorically sat back, looked at it and went, do you know what, there's a method to this, there's a pattern to this. Probably because he was a computer programmer, he saw the pattern. But he went back to Virginia Satir and said, do you know what it is that makes you so good at being a therapist? And she was like, well, you know, I know it's something to do with the asking questions, but I'm not really quite sure what it is. And he said, well, I know, and I know exactly what it is. And not only do I know exactly what it is, but I can tell you this, I can show you what you've done, and you can teach this to other people. And what he was actually doing was what is at the heart of NLP, which is modelling. He's basically looking at a model of excellence, as in these therapists, looking at what they did, unconsciously, noting that, seeing where the successes were, writing it down, turning it into a form that he could learn it himself, and he could teach it to others. But the interesting thing about this, I think, is that those therapists did what they did, they were excellent at what they did, and had no idea, because it was outside of their conscious awareness. And by modelling and using the techniques that have grown into the field of NLP, they were able to extract the unconscious skills that these therapists did and model them themselves to use or teach them to others. So the first model within NLP, which was the meta model, which is a questioning model, comes directly from therapists. Therapists who are world renowned from being excellent in what they did. Then, the, then he, you know, the second one was the Milton model and, and, and so on. So the whole field of NLP was based on modelling excellence. And he says, we take the best of what people do, synthesise it down, make it learnable and share it with each other. And that is what the real future of NLP will be and it's going to stay that way. And he, at the heart of what he was doing is saying, is we are looking at whatever somebody does when they excel in it, let us use the NLP techniques to break that down so that we can also do that excellence ourselves. Now think about that from a sporting perspective. You know, if you are a coach or, you know, a trainer or a performance director or you have an, a, an excellent example of somebody that does something really well and you, you go, how do they do that? That's, that's the question really that is at the heart of NLP. How does somebody do what they do? And then 
NLP training is about teaching everything that we teach at the practitioner and the master practitioner is something that has been modelled from somebody who is excellent, something that you, that you know it works time and time and time again. That information has been extracted and that gets taught to people so that other people can also do that. Now, does that mean that I could take somebody off the street and turn them into the next, you know, Messi or, you know, whoever? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Of course not. What it means, though, is that, you know what, whatever level we start with, if we apply some of these tools, we're going to up the ante. We're going to take somebody to a, a higher level for them. You know, so we will all start at different places. You know, when I work with, like, if I'm working with an elite athlete, they're starting up here. If I start with somebody, you know, who's like maybe a county level or below, they're, they're down here. Can I up them? Yes. This one might go like that. This one might go like that. You know, the, it's still up in the ante. Now, with the elite, with the elite work particularly, that can make the difference, yeah, between winning a Grand Slam, between walking away with the, you know, the, the championship, winning all your 2020s, whatever it is that you are wanting to do, that can make the difference if we apply the techniques. But I'm not going to be able to, you know, otherwise I'd have done it myself and I'd have been a Grand Slam winner or a winner or something. Sorry, quick question. So, do you learn how to, do you just learn the patterns that someone else has picked up? like a spoon-fed type model, or do you actually learn how to do what it says there, how to observe, how to synthesize it, and then yeah. sort of make it digestible? Yeah, if you, go, if you go through the training to the end of master prep, so what, so what we do is at practitioner level, we learn all of the tools, um, and it sounds like it's just one tool for another. It's all kind of like mixed together, so you'll, learn, you'll go through looking at... Um, how we do all of the observational techniques, so sensory acuity, what am I looking at, what am I picking up on, what are the little things that I need to learn. We learn about the conscious and the unconscious mind, we look at the frames, the principles, the ideas. We build on our tools and techniques as we go through. Then we get a good grounding in all of, the, good grounding in all of those, and when you come to the master practitioner, you learn to do exactly this, and you learn to do it by doing your own modelling project. So, you know, you pick something, you don't pick something that's going to, you know, is the world piece. What you do is you pick something that's like containable and doing doable over like a four month period. Um, and you learn exactly how to do it so that you'll have the tools and techniques and the know-how, practical know-how as well as theoretical know-how of how to go out and do exactly that, yes. So if you've got somebody that you look at and you go, do you know what, we should do that. This teaches you how to do that. But it is a little bit like, you see, this is why I go back to saying we have to learn this well, because it's walk before you can run. There's a lot of claims within NLP about NLP is brilliant. Yes, it is. NLP can do this straight away. Hmm, sometimes it can, but the thing is, do you know what? The people who are really good at, at, at NLP make it look like you can do it straight away because they've got all the language, they've got the sensory acuity, they see, they know what's going on, they can pick up on the unconscious cues and then they can work with somebody and something can happen just like this. Or it can take a lot, a lot longer. But somebody who's just got, you know, a hold of one thing, that's when it becomes problematic in my mind. But that's the same for anything. You know, it's like if you suddenly let somebody loose on a shooting range and they've never shot a rifle before and went, well, do you know what? You know where to pull the trigger. <laughs> Off you go. That's probably even worse than using NLP. Because the thing is, if you do an NLP technique and you don't do it very well, or the only thing that will happen is nothing. You know, so. I suppose that's one question, though. My other thing is, I don't know how deep it goes, but one of my personal concerns actually uh, opening a Pandora's box. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Using language, yeah. and then not having the tools to deal with it. Yes, that that for me is um, one of my real yeah like, bones. I've seen it happen. Yes, it and does. The damage that can cause can be quite um, yeah significant. Yeah, and the, the thing is, and I, I I think the important point to, to do about this is we can open up a Pandora's box whether we've trained in NLP or not. You know. Um, and I, I think what happens with NLP is if somebody 
is um, aware of ethics and boundaries. And one of the things that we are very hot on is being ethical. You know, like as a chartered psychologist, I can't not be, because I'll get struck off. You know, if I, if I did things that wasn't, I mean, that you know, apart from being struck off, I want to be ethical. So we talk about ethics, we talk about boundaries. If something is outside of our um, knowledge sphere or ability to be able to do, we don't touch it with a proverbial barge pole. Yeah, we refer on to somebody who's more experienced or to somebody who is better equipped to deal with this. You know, so, I mean, yeah, right, you know, these techniques as well as lots of others. I mean, I hear people going in who have never, nothing to do with NLP, and they're chatting to somebody in the bar or whatever, and I'm being nosy. And I'm listening to what they're saying, and, and they're going in, and it's like they've just trampled all over somebody's emotions. Nothing to do with NLP, it's just that they thought that they were kind of like helping, so in they go. So yes, absolutely, and this comes down to our ethical awareness and being very um, cognizant of, of what we can and we can't deal with. For sure, yeah, for sure. So, and we do talk about that, yeah, we talk about that um, and we talk about, you know, how to refer, what to do, where to get extra help, sure. So, um, simplistically, yeah, NLP is the exploration of how we think, feel and act. So our thinking will affect our feelings and emotions and our emotions and our feelings will affect how we act. And going the other way. Yeah? So the whole area really is about that. It's about when we train in this, it's about understanding those three um, aspects and thinking about it from a conscious and an unconscious perspective, which I'm not going to go into now. Um, we spend quite a bit of time looking at the conscious and unconscious mind and what that means. <coughs> 